Thanks for joining today. I know um, we've got a lot going on. Um, and we're so excited about like all the things that are coming up this year. So we wanted to just like talk to folks about that. And, and yeah, yeah. so um, let's get into it. Um, you know, we're making some like, there's so many changes, right? Not, not huge changes, but we're making some shifts and but we had some, let's start here. Let's start with some of the wins that we, we saw in uh, 2022 um, in the November election on ballot measures. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, Measure W, um, better known as the democracy dollars, that was a huge win. Uh, Measure T, Measure V, um, also like the housing um, ballot measures that we won were, yeah, just amazing and much needed here in the city of Oakland. Yeah, so Measure T was the um, progressive business tax. And then um, Measure W was Fair Elections Oakland, or also Democracy Dollars, mm-hmm. and then which included Democracy Dollars. And then what was the other one that you mentioned? Measure V. V. Yeah, which was... Housing, just cause, um, just cause, <laughs> yes, extending just cause to thousands of more Oaklanders to be able to receive that protection. Yeah, so, that's right, that's yes. right. And just cause was like such a, you know, like Oakland was such at the forefront of setting that down. And so I just want to give a shout out to um, Casa Justa Just Cause, who really that's their name of their organization and it's built around really um, housing and just cause protections for, um, for Oaklanders. Um, could you say a little bit about just cause and like what came about with the win with measure V? Um, what I do know about um, measure V is that it would, extend um, the years that were covered, right? So I think currently, uh, or before it was passed, it was covered up. Can you remind me of the year? I think it was 90, maybe 96? 94. 94. Buildings up to uh, 94. So um, that increased by 10 years, if I'm not correct. Um, that would get us up to 2004. The buildings covered. No, so from... it wasn't like it wasn't 10 more years, but it created so that buildings um, that were built in the last 10 years, it's a rolling kind of exemption, right? So mm-hmm. next year, so right now, the ones that are not are exempt from it are 2023 to. Um, 2003 oh no 2013 right so 2013 to 2023 buildings that were built in that time are exempt from just cause but next year it'll go from 2014 to 2024 so there's always one additional year that kind of gets rolled in yes yes thank you um for clarifying that yeah so it's such a big deal, right? Like being able to bring that protection. And there was also like, I think there, you know, underneath that. So just as a reminder to folks, cause I'm sure 2022 was like a whole year ago. <laughs> it was, it's yeah. only been like a month and a half, but it feels like a year and a half ago. Um, so then uh, it also gave um, protection to children and educators or families and educators during the school year, they couldn't be evicted. And that's so important, right? Yes, definitely. Um, forgot that, that addition. Um, I think it also covers uh, some RVs now as well. I think that was a, um, a huge addition because, you know, uh, folks are housed where they can be housed in Oakland. And I think, um, that the part around the educators is so important 
because you're already dealing with so many um, things as being a parent and being an educator and then to lose your housing um, during the school year could be devastating. So, yes. Yeah, and uh, just to be really clear, it's it's not all RVs anywhere. It's like RVs that are parked on private property, right? And so sure. um, that might be doing that. But I mean, we're looking at this year. So the um, we're looking at implementation of the democracy dollars, and that's um, really kind of exciting. Yes, um, being able to to pass that was already like a sighting, um, just hearing folks, how they talked about it on the phones and the doors, um, just giving, I think, the opportunity for folks to feel like they are um, engaging in the process of democracy and also have these tools that they can lend to candidates that they care about, that care about them in their community, right? Um, really excited folks. So to be able to um, follow this now and through the implementation to see um, folks be able to receive these funds and these vouchers get returned back to these candidates who can um, build up Oakland. I think another thing that folks um, were excited about is like the cost. It, it, it's such a low cost uh, for the city to be able to give these vouchers to the community and it's going to have a huge impact. It's going to um, shift the way um, we elect candidates um, here in Oakland um, because it's going to move some of that money. There's been a history of the money coming from uh, the wealthiest white voters, right? Uh, and also uh, folks who live outside of Oakland paying into these um, campaigns. And um, we should have more influence on who we elect in Oakland. So I think this uh, will definitely give that opportunity. That's right. You know, and I, I think, you know, the so so folks know, you know, we're going to start to see like uh, public education around this as we move. And um, and I'm going to actually. Um, Walk this person from continuing to put stuff in our chat. Um, so uh, I want to, um, you know, it's really important because um, what's key to this is that it's going to give all eligible donors, right? So, like people who you, if you are a, as as long as you're a resident of California, right? You don't have to be a registered voter to receive these vouchers. So it's four $25 vouchers. So it's gonna open up the possibility of people who cannot vote get an opportunity to participate um, in, our, in our electoral process in a way that wasn't available before. And, um, you know, we saw so many, you know, we've been talking about democracy dollars for over a year and a half now. So like, but if you look at what's the changes that have come to to, uh, to Seattle, where it's the, it's been implemented already, like right. it's going to be some big changes. And but it's a lot of work. We're trying to like move it so that um, th through the Public Ethics Commission, because that's under the Fair Elections Act, will that's where it's going to be like housed in the city, right. and will be managed there. And so, um, you know, we um, you know we're trying to. They're going to uh, build it up and have this program ready to launch for 2024, y'all. That's next year. <laughs> and it feels like that, if you think about it. Right. You know? And so right. um, we'll be talking more about that this year, right? Um, yes. So what are some other things we're going to be working on um, this year? What's some of the things I mean, cooking in the kitchen? You know, there's so many, so many things, right? Um, it's not. Uh, technically an election year. So um, on the off years, we focus on the budget, right? The budget is huge. The budget is important. Where the money goes, you always want to follow where the money goes, right? Um, public safety is going to be um, a priority for Oakland Rising, Oakland Rising Action. Um, 
paying attention to the county, not only the city of Oakland budget, but paying attention to the board of supervisors and the county budget, I think is going to be huge for us. And then also we have a newly elected district attorney. Um, that, you know, um, that we're going to be keeping an eye on and we're going to be holding accountable for all the things that um, she mentioned while she was running and we turned out and we got her in the seat and now we're going to look for that accountability yeah and you know i want to i want to um i'm going to drop in the chat here um that the um i'll drop in the chat soon um but you know th what's important around this is that um the da accountability table uh, you can follow them on Facebook and uh, I mean on IG and um, they, we put, we sit on that table too. Um, and um, they have uh, created with well, a table has created this hundred day platform that has right. been offered to, uh, to the district attorney's office. And so, um, you know, I think that one of the things that's kind of um, exciting, exciting to see um, in terms of like changes at the DA's office, right, is that Pam Price has brought on um, a task force to reopen and is committed to reopening at least six cases of police killings, um, right? And, you know, I like, it's like, everyone's off optimistically cautious or cautiously optimistic is that the right way to say it and um and the thing about it is is like i you know i think what we all really wish is that you know the district attorney would um center all of the choices that they are going to be making moving forward on the experiences of the community right and like something like that requires families being able to uh, really participate in um, moving uh, moving those types of things forward because you know you open up a case like that and it's like yeah we're going to open this case up and then that family has to reopen all of all the wounds. wounds that's right John you know what's up I do I definitely you know have been impacted by our justice system right and um yeah, definitely some flaws and definitely some folks who are being scarred and who have suffered trauma behind the decisions of a district attorney in the past. And um, my hopes are and that this district attorney definitely um, steps in the right direction around like restorative practices and healing and putting impacted people first and listening to the families and what their um, concerns are and how they want to see the change made. So, yeah, I'm excited about this 100-day agenda. Yeah, so I just put in the chat, like, um, you know, the ACDA table, like that's the table that you can go and you can click there and, like, see what's on that 100-day agenda. And they're continuing to push and make certain, like, I think – I think I hear a lot of people always saying, oh, like accountability of electeds means like we're holding them true to their platform. And, um, but what it really is, is we are holding them accountable to our demands. And I think that's, that's such a critical, like such a critical way to think about it, right? Yes, definitely. That we create the processes, we create the plan, um, we create the vision for how we want to govern each other, right? Right. And, and, and not coming from the head cop. That's right. <laughs> and there you have it, John. That is like, you just brought us all back to reality, right? Which is like the DA is the head cop in Alameda County. And like the thing is, is that when we're looking at the budget for the county is like, the thing is, is folks don't really know the difference be between what our services from the city of Oakland or the city that they live in and Alameda County. The county system is much broader in terms of, and the budget is so much larger. Yes. 
So like in Oakland, for example, we have the police department, which takes about 50% of our general fund budget, right? This does not even include their overtime pay, right? Um, and what a mess right now. <laughs> what a yes. mess. What a mess. <laughs> if you all don't know, you should go um, check out the news on what's happening with the police department and with the police chief. But if you look at the county, the other side to that is that it's like um, hundreds of millions of dollars going to the sheriff's department, which right. runs is the coroner as well as, as um, they run Santa Rita jail. Um, and so yeah. we also are, are wanting to see more accountability there where, um, where that, where that is going. What are some things you, yes. what do you think are, can we, let's talk a little bit about what are some of the things like our Oakland rising collaborative partners are wanting to see, um, you know, big on the people's budget in terms of for the city of Oakland, right? What are some big um, things that they've been talking about? Yeah. Um, I think for our partners, they they definitely have um, the people's in mind, right? It's the it's the people's budget. They're really focusing on housing. They're really focusing on uh, folks who've been formerly incarcerated, building up those services. Um, yeah, black and brown, flatland Oaklanders is is the main focus, right? And uh, improving their lives in, in each way they can, like. Um, just making sure that they have uh, the services that they need, that they um, have housing, they have sustainable lifestyles. And I think those are kind of like the core values for which our partners are building out this people's budget. There are definitely some specific things um, and specific demands that the partners want, but I think um, the, 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 it encompasses mostly um, people's values and their livelihood and making sure that folks are housed and have everything that they need to be sustainable openers. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I think that there's some big, like I was saying earlier, there's like these big differences between the city and the county. And at, this, at the county level, we're looking at mental health services. We're looking at social services. Right, we're looking at um, health, um, um, public health services, um, and housing is such a big issue at this um, at the county level, right? And um, much bigger than even what we're talking about at the city level. Um, you all know that there's a bunch of things moving and happening all over the city, and we've just seen the impact of gentrification um, and displacement. But um, you know. We want, we really want to prioritize that and, you know, what it means in terms of like right now projected deficits, I think we're all a little, we know how that goes, right? In that moment when they start saying, we're not going to have enough money, um, <laughs> which is so wild, right, John? Like, it's like, right. we don't have enough money, but these corporations have like made billions, y'all, yeah. billions hundreds of billions of dollars um right by like increasing the cost of everything <laughs> right and there's money in the reserve like if folks really you know pay attention to the county's budget and really see where the money's going how the money's moving there is money there's money for all the things that the community needs if we um shift that money from OPD from the sheriff's department, from the coroner's office, and we shift that money into services in the community, housing and better education for our kids. That's right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So, um, you know, another, you know, one of, and the people who pass the budget at the county level are our board of supervisors. And so we're hoping to really do a public education campaign on like know your board of supervisors, like who are they? And, um, you know, I, we want to say publicly that, um, you know, rest in peace to Richard Valle, 
uh, who passed away last week. He was the board of supervisor um, who sat in uh, District 3. He just got reelected uh, last year in the primary election, um, but he was uh, quite ill and, um, and passed away last week. So um, much respect and, um, and love to his family as they're grieving and the community. I know that he worked with a lot of folks in labor, worked out with a lot of folks um, really pushing. He was a labor advocate. So, um, and so now we're looking at like, there's a potential for um, not open rising per se, but we're just following and watching to see like that uh, there is going to have to be an appointment for at least a year, and then that will mean that next year there'll be uh, someone running for that seat. But next year, the Board of Supervisors in District 2, 4, and now likely District 3 are going to have to go up for re-election. And um, I think folks need to know that that's who's passing these huge budget in, um, in Alameda County. And um, so we want to let folks know, like, who are are your board of supervisors and why you should know this yeah a lot of that i think is going to be happening this year um uh, public education right every opportunity um we get we're going to be giving folks um uh, more information like we mentioned earlier about democracy dollars and implementation around there around public safety, around the DA work, around the Board of Supervisors, just making sure folks have as much knowledge as possible uh, moving into 2020, uh, 2024. Right. That's right. That's right. And, um, you know, I think one of the biggest things is that we, as Oakland Rising, we did a little bit of restructuring on our staffing, and so we're trying to bring on a political director so if there are folks out there who are amazing, skilled organizers who are really um, down to um, take on this role with and work with John on the program team to, to lead our integrated voter engagement projects and um, campaigns, as well as, you know, really representing in the community, um, Oakland Rising, we would love to have you come on board. Yes, yes, yes. You know, there are some amazing organizers out in Oakland um, that's ready to, you know, roll up your sleeves and do some great work for this community. That's right. That's right. So, like, show up, come out. You can go to oaklandrising.org slash jobs. Um, that will take you to the website, to the job description. Um, reach out. And, you know, I want to say that there are a lot of folks of color out there who – are thinking, I'm not qualified for that. Uh, but, but trust me, a bunch of mediocre white men are thinking that they are. So please, please, um, even if you aren't, even if you think you're not qualified, I feel like um, put yourself out there and just see because um, the potential and possibilities um, might not be evident to you. Um, and so go through the process with us and see if that's a possibility. Um, thanks. Um, Nelson put in the chat, Oakland Rising's voter guides are my trusted go to each election. That's what's up. And right. shout out to shout out to our comms team that really worked on that, y'all. Uh Jocelyn yes. on our on our comms team really worked on putting that together. And um yeah, and our C three voter guide, yo, that hit reached i think twelve thousand people online right and then you know it also went out to uh, sixty thousand voters in oakland um and then another eleven thousand went out to um out into alameda county so you know those were so critical to um to i think informing folks right yes i feel like a lot of people have those sentiments <laughs> nelson uh, that Open Rising is the home for where they get their political information, their political grounding, and all that information that doesn't reach the flatlands of Oakland, right? Um, other than us going out and making sure that we get it out to folks. That's right. That's right. So come join our, 
our team, y'all, bring, uh, you know, if yes. you join the political, be there, our political director, our next political director, so that you can help lead on that endorsement process to get the voter guides out there and really um, have us a, a huge say in Oakland. Um, I think folks now look forward to getting those voter guides. So, um, so assisting with that is really important. Um, you know, um, we're going to start back up having our weekly Monday meals. Next week is a holiday, so unfortunately we won't have it next week. Um, but we'll be pretty much going week to week again on these Monday meals. So um, look out for us. Join us every Monday at noon. Um, again, not next week, but the week, <laughs> the week <laughs> after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah is there anything you want to close out with john um no i just know that folks there's a lot of things going on in the world and in the news and yeah just take some time out to love on yourself and take care of yourself mm. and reach out to your comrades and your loved ones if you need support 